memorization and better understanding of the topic here are the three keywords one is underwriting one is rate making that is in the heading of the chapter and the other one is self-insured I picked up these three topics should be memorized and should be understood by each and every student so what is underwriting underwriting is the process by which insurers try to avoid the adverse selection a selection of high risk people in the pool and they want to include all high risk and low risk people that is they want to pool the risk between all, among the people all people so underwriting is the one of the process and rate making is another process so these two processes are used by the insurers to avoid the adverse selection that you have learned from Rick's video now what is underwriting is actually is identifying the determinants of claims experience what is claims experience that can be uh, your previous years claims so that is that is more suitable to experience rating another one is establishing risk pools known expected loss and minimum variance so we are going to some formulas with objective risk and we'll go, go to that and matching new members to appropriate risk pool so if we have any re new member how they match into the appropriate risk pool whether they are low risk or high risk and how we are going to underwrite them so underwriting is a process by which insurers try to identify whether a new individual is a low risk individual or a high risk individual in terms of disease prevalence and expected losses before going into the objective risk i would like to mention the techniques of comp computations of premium so oh, we all know about premium and we saw the video on theory of insurance and we found that the risk premium was the amount beyond the expected loss due to illness then risk averse people is willing to give as premium so gross premium includes this pure premium that is risk premium along with the loading percentages of premium so what is loading factors loading factors are the factor which is calculated over the premium for taking care of the associated marketing administrative and other costs of insurance company so a gross premium includes both risk premium and the administrative costs which is loading uh, loading factors and then from there we can go into the objective risk the idea of objective risk is measuring the risk and the main theme of underwriting or risk rating so what is objective risk it is denoted by the formula sigma divided by mu which is again divided by root over n here sigma is the variation variation of uh, claim which we know that variance can be dispersion of a claim or dispersion of any mathematical term can be explained by few concepts which are which can be range which can be variance which can be standard deviation so any any formula any kind of statistical technique can be used a statistical uh, concept can be used to uh, define this dispersion of claims and mu is the total expected amount of loss and n is the total number of people now from there we we can see that when risk increases when the variance increases the risk increases the variance in the uh, numerator uh, in the numerator term so when variance increases variance between the high and low increases the objective risk is also in the increasing term and secondly when the expected loss increases the risk decreases it is quite counterintuitive you can say that well why expected loss when expected loss is uh, in decreases the risk should be um, uh, decreases also but it is vice versa because you can see that when there is the expected loss is increasing the amount of risk also decreases and when the number of more more you cover 
more you have in the in your pool the object radius is, uh, is going to decrease so it is the law of uh, large number and it can satisfy it, it is very easy to understand why large number of people in the pool reduces your risk this is the formula for counting medical loss ratio that is mlr in traditional mlr we can say that this is the ratio of healthcare claims with premiums in aaca mlr has been defined that healthcare claims with other quality improvement expenses quality has been very much focused in the focus of aca and with the ratio of premiums along with taxes licensing other regulatory fees but the point is affordable care act from the beginning of 2011 they fixed the amount that 80 percent of the total premium should be used as healthcare claims for small group of people small group of uh, companies who are small group small businesses and 85 percent should be expensed for the large group of large companies so this ratio medical loss ratio loss is in the term of the insurance they regard it as loss the premium is their earning and the healthcare claims which they pay subsequently over the uh, whole year that is their loss so this medical loss ratio should not be less than 80 percent or 85 percent that is a that is the provision one of the provision we are we told you uh, several times that we are going to put in these those provisions of affordable care act when whenever it is relevant here is the one thing that is affordable care act is being uh, through affordable care act it is being implemented now this is the second word rate making and you can see there are three important types of rate making or rating that is community rating manual rating and experience rating and among manual rating there are adjusted community rating and community rating by class there are two types of categories and experience rating has also two types of rating subcategories that is prospective rating and retrospective rating so when all the people of the society or community is in the same pool we we call it community rating when we calculate the premium for the whole community as a whole then it is the community rating and often we make mistakes uh, of uh, calling manual rating as community rating because when when we calculate the premiums on the basis of the characteristics like age gender location or what he what he or she do as a, as his or her occupation or what in industry he or she belongs to or what is what is his or her health status then we are calling it manual rating it is called manual because before adve before the advent of computer the insurance company the executives of insurance companies used to do this by hand so it is manual rating this is a picture of different factors of manual rating and the difference between present and future methodology and in terms of age there you can see up to 10 is to 1 or 5 is to 1 was a common methodology but now according to affordable care act the age rating age band should not be more than 3 is to 1 so this is another provision affordable care act is addressing these rating techniques rating bands and the another technique another factor gender is commonly used and male and female rates are different were different but from now on after the promulgation of affordable care act there should be no difference between sex and industry for industry level or health status you cannot you uh, put some rating on these things and surprisingly for tobacco use before before it and there was no a rating ban on tobacco use we all know that smoking is a very injurious and very important risk factor but in affordable care act up to 50 percent that is 1.5 you can 
put 1.5 times to their premium, not more than that, under the Affordable Care Act. Adjusted community rating is one kind of community rating which uses some kind of techniques to calculate the community rating for different um, uh, proportion of single couple or family within each group that is contract mix. Another concept is contract size that is within the family what is the number of people are covered so contract mix is within each group contract size is within each family and charging ratio is the ratio of couple and family to single rate so what is the difference or ratio between the couple and family to single rate on the basis of groups data so what is the ratio between couple and single what is the ratio between family and single all these three can be used to mm, calculate the rate for community rating that is called adjusted community rate community rating by class is somewhat expanded from the community rating adjusted community rating here the, the insurers uh, takes the contract mix size and uh, contract ratio uh, charging ratio into account beyond that they include this age and gender mix of the group and industry classification we have already already mentioned that so community rating by class includes the class by age group gender and industry classification here is the provision of affordable care act on age rating restriction Starting in 2014, Affordable Care Act cannot permit any insurance plan to rate upon age more than three times. So before it was it was five times, now it is three times. Private insurance companies can feel the, they are on the death panels. They they are on the receiving end of all these provisions, but. We don't know what was their margin of profit and now what is the implications of these new rules and provisions in Affordable Care Act and time will say whether private health insurance companies are really suffering or getting better and better over the time. So prospective experience rating is one kind of experience rating. We all know that experience rating is calculating the premium on the basis of experience. Experience of what? Experience of disease and experience of claim claims that is borne by the insurance company. So in prospective experience rating, the insurance company take into account the previous claims experience. Here one factor, this credibility factor, that is weight of the pool versus group claims experience, which includes the factors we used in objective risk formula the variance the total claims and the number of people you are covering along with their industry state or size as well as with entire book of business of the people and risk borne by the insurer that the rate is coded for the forthcoming period so prospective experience rating is the type of experience rating which uses the past experience of claims of a group in retrospective experience rating the firm usually the large firms use this type of uh, rating they pays the third-party administrator that is the insurer insurance company who act as the third party the claim administrator they pays the insurance the amount of each claim up until some point that is called the stop loss feature where it whether it may be aggregate stop loss for all employees there may be some amount that beyond this point the insurer will carry the risk or maybe individual stop loss amount say $100,000 for an individual if the amount exceeds this $100,000 then the insurance company will bear the risk so here the large firm itself is the insurer who are bearing the risk up until some point then the insurance company the third party administrator in this case comes into effect and takes the 
risk of bearing beyond some stop loss amount. Here is a flowchart of involving third party administrator or insurance company and the employer based health insurance schemes. Employer based health insurance schemes is extremely extremely important for US healthcare system as uh, according to 2012 data 58% people are covered by these employer based health insurance schemes and we have to understand the mechanism of these third party administrator and how employers are self insured here comes our the third third key key point so here's the difference between fully insured and self-funded insurance plans so in fully insured plans the carrier which is the insurance company takes the risk and in self uh, insured plan employers takes the risk the basic difference the basic difference between strict bearer is that and cost set by carrier that is the insurance company uh, that is claims margin and admin so it's all about this rating and underwriting processes and in self in, uh, insurance the actual claims are paid that is retrospective payment of the claim and fully insured paid by the carrier claims and paid by the employer in fact the paid by the third party administrator the em employers the companies make contract with these insurance companies third party administrator and they pay and in uh, the companies pay back to these third party administrators the claims amount and the plan design is set by insurance company for fully insured uh, plans and self insurance plan is set by employers themselves and regulatory oversight we already have uh, mentioned ERISA in 1974 has granted this tax exemption for the companies for self insurance plans that that is why the the number of self insurance plans among the large companies actually not not among the small companies is very in in very high proportion and state mandates is there fully insured com uh, companies there is self mandate but uh, state mandate but the self insured plans are mandated by the federal government here is the data from 2012 it shows that 5000 and more employees in a company the companies with more than 5000 and they are more likely most likely that is 93 percent possibility they are being in the self-insurance plan and gradually it declines and you can see that less than 200 workers in a company a company with less than 200 workers has only 15 percent chance of being self-insured so small in small companies are less self self-insured and large companies are more self-insured and we are going to see why here is a hypothetical scenario from Colorado that a small insurance, a small company can be self-insured and after the first year, if there is a claim of unusual amount, then their claim experience is getting bad and their premium is going to be high. So they are denied um, less, no, less amount of premium, so they are going to be uninsured in the later year. But under the provisions of Affordable Care Act, these type of underwriting, the claim experience cannot be used that much. So small insur small companies can be self-insured and using the lower threshold of stop-loss coverages and they can uh, decrease their uh, uh, actual premiums, they can be self-insured and avoid in this kind of scenario if we're buying more costly coverage from the health insurance market so the regulations have different kind of implications if we want to rein the health insurance companies their um, surging profits there is the, there we are creating incentives for the companies insurance companies or the demand side uh, are perverse incentives to be insured and uh, concealing their experiences uh, claim experiences and their health status so 
the pol for policy making for small insurance companies and large insurance companies we have to be some kind of in the middle to find the optimum solution what would be the best let's see what affordable care act provision can be can do to the premium setting of these health insurance companies in the near future